Good morning. So Jesus did a lot in his three years in ministry, didn't he? It's been estimated that he walked over 3,000 miles, performed over 37 miracles, taught hundreds, thousands of people. But what I find most interesting, what amazes me the most about Jesus' relatively short ministry was the number of healings that he performed while he was on the way somewhere else. He had a plan, he had an agenda, he had important things to do, he only had three years to do it, and yet he was able to be interrupted. He was in the middle of something when Jairus came to him saying that my daughter is sick and needs your help. He was on the way to go heal his daughter, resurrect his daughter, when another woman came to him needing help, and he stopped and helped her. So regardless of what you believe about who Jesus was and what he did and what it all meant, he knew that his time was going to be short. You see, Jesus was disrupting the system. He was criticizing the powers that be and the status quo. He was outspoken about the Jewish leaders like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And not only that, but the Jewish people at the time of Jesus lived in oppression under Roman rule. And the Jewish people had this idea that one day a Messiah would come who would overthrow their oppressors. And they started calling Jesus the name for the Messiah, Son of Man. And he called himself that too. And then he used the term son of God. And at that time, the Roman Caesars, the kings essentially of the Roman Empire who were oppressing the Jewish people, son of God is the title they used. It signified political power. So Jesus doing what he did, using the titles that he used, not to mention that his predecessor, John the Baptist, had already been arrested for doing the same things. Jesus knew that his time was going to be short. And yet he never rushed. He paced himself. I think so often in our lives, we forget to pace ourselves. (laughs) We spend a whole lot of time living in the future, don't we? What's going to happen a month from now? What are things going to be like four years from now? Maybe we look ahead on our calendar and we see that we've got a busy couple of weeks, a lot going on. And I don't know about you, but sometimes what I do is I get pre-stressed out about the stress that I know I'm going to feel during that time. (laughs) Sometimes we live in the future by saying, oh, well, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when the kids are in school. I'll be happy when the oldest can drive and I don't have to cart them everywhere. I'll be happy when they go off to college. I'll be happy when they come back for break. I'll be happy when I get that job. I'll be happy when I'm retired. I'll be happy when this issue is done. We spend a lot of time in the future. And when we're not living in the future, we tend to be living in the past. We tend to be living in regret, Or the what ifs, what if I did that instead? What if my parents hadn't done this? But you see, Jesus paced himself and lived in the present. And by being present is how he was able to recognize those opportunities. If he was so focused on the future and where he knew his ministry was heading, to jail or worse, He might have been in a hurry to get it all done, and yet he wasn't. He paced himself. He lived in the present moment so he could be open to those nudgings of spirit. You see, it's in the present moment that we can recognize that big love in the small moments, the magic in the mundane. When we're too busy living in past or future, we miss what is right in front of us. 
This comes up for me because, you know, I have a lot going on in my life. I'm in graduate school at Unity and Seminary. I work, I volunteer, I've got two teenagers and one very high maintenance dog. <laughs> so it keeps me busy. And I'm always, it's always curious and a little funny to me when I have a talk planned and you know I have my title, Pace Yourself, I've had this title for months. And yet just this week, I needed to learn this lesson again. I had a busy day on Tuesday and I was running from this place to that place and meetings and in lots of conversations and just, you know, a busy full day. And I get home that evening and I'm the first one home and it's the first moment I've had all day to myself. And the first thing, I mean the very first thing I do is grab my laptop and sit down to work. And I recognized it as I was doing it, and I'm opening up my laptop, and the screen turns on, and right there in the center of my screen, because I was working on it the night before, is pace yourself. <laughs> and so I stared at those words for a second or two, and then just started laughing out loud. <laughs> because I need this lesson just as much as anyone. And so I made a choice right then to close my laptop, and spend a little bit of time checking in with myself. All day I'd been with other people, giving to them. You have to take these moments in your day where you're checking in with yourself. Lao Tzu says, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. There have actually been studies that have been done where they'll take a group of people and split them into two groups. And one group is supposed to work and produce and make as many of some trinket as they possibly can. And the other group is supposed to take breaks every 10 minutes. And the studies that they've done have shown that the group that takes breaks actually ends up getting more done. Rest and renewal, taking time to get ourselves into this present moment to pace ourselves actually helps us be more productive, more creative and inspired, have less stress level and even lowers our blood pressure. In my working life, I'm a really big fan of the Pomodoro technique, which is where you set a timer and you work for 20 minutes and then the alarm goes off and you take a five minute break and then you go back and do another one. And it's amazing to me how much more gets done and with how much more less stress when I pace myself. So I want to share with you some specific practices that you can use when you find yourself in those busy days and realizing that you're not pacing yourself to get back in touch with that heart and that soul of your true self, to reconnect with your essence and to reconnect with spirit throughout your day. One is something that's called meditate in a moment. How many of you meditate? Awesome. Okay, maybe this isn't true for you, but this is typically how my meditation practice goes. Okay, I sit down, I get my music on, I light my candle, ready to meditate, and I sit there, and then my thoughts are like way out over there, and so I have to grab them, pull them back. Okay, I'm meditating now. And then my thoughts go over here, and I have to grab and pull, okay, I'm meditating now. And I breathe for a little while, and then my thoughts run away again, and I pull them back. And I do that quite a few times, but then at some point, there's that magic moment in meditation. Do you know what I'm talking about? That magic moment where the thoughts just fall away, and my body's relaxed, and I just feel that connection. Have you felt that in your meditation? Yeah. So there's this exercise where what you're trying to do is get that feeling in a moment without having to pull your thoughts back and wait and wait and wait for it. And so what the practice is, is take, sit down to meditate and have a stopwatch on. And when you have that moment, pause the stopwatch and see how long it took. And then the next time, do it again and see how long it took. And what you find is that when you get to that moment and you're tracking to see how long it takes to get me there, 
that time starts getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Until one day you figure out whatever it is that happens in your brain and in your body and in your spirit that gets you to that really sweet moment where anytime you need it, you can just go and feel it that quickly. That moment of connection, that moment of sacredness, that moment of peace, to be able to summon it, to feel it that quickly, to meditate in a moment. Another practice to help you pace yourself is to use an affirmation or a mantra to remind you to slow down, to be present. After Tuesday, my mantra this week became simply pace yourself. And so as I was going through my day, I would say in my brain, pace yourself, pace yourself. I'm a big fan of affirmations, as you know, and as many of you are. The way I like to work with them is rather than having a bunch of different affirmations for different things, I like to focus on one at a time because I find that something short and simple, and that's the only thing that I'm really focused on for an affirmation, it sticks in my brain better, and sometimes it shows up in my dreams, and that's when I know that I've really got this, <laughs> right? I've really brought this statement of truth into my consciousness and into my being when I start dreaming about it. So I get little index cards and a big black Sharpie and I write my affirmation on those index cards and carry it with me or put it somewhere in my house where I see it. So coming up with an affirmation that can help you stay present to pace yourself. It can be pace yourself or it can be everything in its time. It'll all get done. Whatever statement helps remind you that you don't have to rush, that you can be open to the proddings and the nudgings of spirit in this present moment. Another practice that I love, and this one is for when you're about to distract yourself like I was. I get home and instead of just sitting there and being with myself, I immediately go to work to focus my brain on something else. Is it just me? Do other people have those moments? Okay. So when you catch yourself having that moment, here's a really great trick. All right, I want you to look down and see what color shirt you're wearing. So I've got white on, okay? Anybody surprised? Didn't realize you had that shirt on today? Okay, now look around the room and see if you can find five things that are the same color as your shirt. I've got the wall, I've got this here, the letters. The blinds. I've got white on. It's easy. I must have planned for this. All right, now look around you and find four things that you can touch. And go ahead and touch those four things. <laughs> Now, how about three things that you can smell? Be nice. <laughs> Two things that you can hear. And one thing that you can taste, just notice the taste in your mouth or take a sip of water. And right now I'd say you're much more present than we were before we started that. So that's the five, four, three, two, one. Five things you can see, four things you can touch, Three things, oh, I switched them. Three things you can hear. Two things you can smell. One thing you can taste. It's a really quick way to just bring you right here, right now. And the great thing is, is nobody knows that you're doing it. 
So we're trying to pace ourselves by being fully present in each and every moment, by getting out of our heads and into our lives. I would bet, you don't have to raise your hands, but I would bet at least half of you in this room, just since I've been standing up here talking, have started thinking about something else. <laughs> I've been in your seats. I know how it goes, right? Sometimes we sit there and we just start solving problems in our head. Anybody ever do that? And then sometimes you run out of problems to solve, so you use your head to make up problems to then solve. <laughs> we spend so much time in our heads. Let's get into this present moment. So pacing yourself is all about trusting in divine order. Divine order says that everything happens in the right and perfect time. And even if we don't understand it, even if it's not on our schedule, it is in divine order. From the book of Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Trusting that all is in divine order allows you to pace yourself and be present because you're not trying to get out of the moment that you're currently in. This is great when we're laughing and having fun. It's easy to be present in those times, right? Not so much when we're feeling some worry or some stress or some grief. And yet for everything, there is a season, and it is all in divine order. So that trust, that faith, allows you to be present because you know that whatever happens, the universe is working in your favor. Pacing yourself is about knowing that whenever you have need of something, it will be there. Now this has changed a little bit, because the world's changed, but in the early days of unity, one of the great teachers actually said, don't buy insurance, because it's saying that, <laughs> right? Like it's say, like I'm insured, you know, things have changed, you're required to have car insurance, you should probably have house insurance, so I'm not saying that, but <laughs> I like the theme of that, right? To have full trust and faith that whatever you have need of will be right there when you need it. I've seen that as true in my life. Have you seen that in yours? That phone call from that right person at the right time, that opportunity that came from nowhere right when you needed it. Pacing yourself is knowing and trusting that you will always have what you need when you need it. The words of Jesus according to the Gospel of Matthew, look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given to you as well. Pace yourself means recognizing that the only thing, the only thing, I know this is hard news, the only thing that you have control over is what you do right now. The outcome will be whatever the outcome is. You can't control that. But you can control what you do in the present moment. Again, from the book of Ecclesiastes, which, by the way, I wasn't a huge fan of the Bible before seminary. I don't think my issue was really with the Bible, but the way that it's been used historically to control or to manipulate. But in seminary, we spent a lot of time, a lot of time with the Bible. And I found this new appreciation for it and all the depth that's in some of these stories and in some of these books. And I've really been getting into the book of Ecclesiastes lately. 
so it's written by somebody who calls themselves the preacher or the teacher. And it's not really a story or a narrative. It's almost like just a bunch of philosophical musings about life. And so he thinks about things like, you know, why do bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? And is there really justice? And I work so hard and I've built up this great life and I have all of these you know, servants and this big house and all of this stuff, but in the end, it's all meaningless. He repeats that over and over again. All is meaningless, all is meaningless. But yet it's not pessimistic. He's more looking for that connection with spirit and how do I live my life here and now on this plane? What does it all mean? And so I really enjoy this because after all of these musings and trying to work through this, you know, he goes through, I work so hard in what I've built for my life and I can pass it down to my son, but my son didn't work hard for it. He's not going to appreciate it the way that I appreciated it. And I can't take it with me when I go. So what's the point? It's all meaningless. So he goes through this whole discourse, all of these musings. And then what he gets to is this. And I think this is my new favorite Bible verse. He says, so I realize that the best thing for them is to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. God wants all people to eat and drink and be happy in their work, which are gifts from God. So pacing yourself is about trusting it is all in divine order, knowing that when you have need of something, it will be there, and recognizing that you can't control the future, but you can enjoy this present moment. These same teachings, these same principles about pacing yourself apply also to your Thanksgiving dinner coming up. <laughs> dinner will be ready when it's ready. It's all in divine order. No need to rush, no need to stress. When it's time for dessert, dessert will be there because things are there when you have need of them. So no stress. And you have no way of knowing what tomorrow's bathroom scale will bring. <laughs> but today you can choose to eat, drink, and be happy. Let's move now into our meditation. I want to invite you to sit back in your chair. Feel your back and your hips and your feet against the surfaces. Let's take a deep breath in and exhale. As we rest in this present moment, we are reminded that this moment is all that there is. While our beautiful, capable, amazing, incredible brains can let us time travel to future and to past, to create brand new realities. All of it happens right here, right now. And so we take this moment to pace ourselves, knowing that hurrying and rushing and racing to the finish line isn't what serves us best. We take this sacred moment to connect, to connect with the truth of who you are, to be fully in your body and fully in this moment, trusting in your own innate power and the power of spirit through you to see you through each and every moment of your life. So I invite you to rest. Rest in this moment for a minute.
and we say thank you. Thank you, Spirit, for this moment. And so it is. Amen.